Covers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Who's a year older. Yes, I am. <laughs> yep. So, happy yeah. birthday. Ah, thank you. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so. as I was saying before the, like, just before we got started, I did turn the AC down to 67, so it should run the whole time we're in here. Yeah. And if it actually gets down to 67, that would be pretty exciting. <laughs> but I don't think it will in the time that we have. Uh, you don't know. Maybe. Definitely won't get down to 67 in this room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because we're on the side of the... Sun I don't know what it house. is about. Like, yeah, I'm not sure what it is about this side because actually the sun comes in the back. Um, oh yeah, uh, in the yeah, afternoon. Yeah, there's a whole wall between. I don't know. That's strange. Yeah, but this room is always the hottest room in the house. Strange. Well, except for the uh, guest bedroom, because when it's not in use, I have the vent closed. In you there. shut the vent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no sense in heating and <laughs> yeah. cooling that room. Exactly. Um, so did you have a good birthday? I did. We went out last night. You, well, I know that. Yeah. I was there. It was nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I worked all day, but, yeah. you know, well, still, that, still got to I mean, go out to dinner. There comes a point in your life where uh, birthdays don't mean it's that you just, get two days off or whatever anymore. It's just another day as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Like, I mean, we did go out to dinner. We wouldn't have normally done that. But mm-hmm. other than that, just a regular day. Yeah. So It's not yeah. like we went someplace super fancy or anything no, either. No, no. Exactly. Yeah. Like I say. Just oh, good. Got Mexican dinner. food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love Mexican food. I do food. too, man. I could eat tacos every day. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. So, But yeah, no no celebrating the birthday week or nothing like that. Yeah. Just, you know, get dinner, call it a day. Yeah. I try to ignore birthdays at this point. We're, we're past the point of me even wanting to celebrate a birthday. I, was, I pretty actively actually try to... I mean, I don't, I don't go around advertising when my birthday is. In fact, most people wouldn't have known if it wasn't for Facebook. Yeah. Because Facebook like announces your birthday or whatever to all of your Facebook friends. Yeah. And most of the people that mentioned it to me, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> knew only recognized it because Facebook alerted them. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why um, even some of my good friends wish me happy birthday on January 1st. <laughs> is that when you've got it set? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's funny. No reason to put that information out there in public. It's, yeah. e- it's easier to get your social security number than your birthday. Well, I'll tell you, my, my age is incorrect on Facebook. So yeah. when I set it up, I I just like scrolled as far down as it would let me go, which mm-hmm. was like the 1920s or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so, so I'm over 100 years old on Facebook. <laughs> nice. Nice. So. Been on Facebook that whole time. Uh, the whole time, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. From the beginning. Well, um, we've got a we've got a bunch today. We got a bunch of clips today. Yeah. Um, I I was I mean, I kept there were so many things that were said in public that seemed important <laughs> right. uh, to the kind of things that we talk about here. Um, and I, some of them were long clips, so I cut them up into segments so that we could, we could parse them out a little. Yeah. But um, I tell you, it's like we're living in some kind of alternate dimension or something, man. Like it, it yeah. really is crazy. Because just you mentioning, you know, things said in public, you know, mm-hmm. like it really is true though. Like some of the stuff would have been satire not that many years ago, yeah. you know. And <laughs> it's, not, I mean, it's not conspiracy if they say it out loud, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it, yeah, we're gonna have some of them clips today, by the way, <laughs> that yeah. are like just out in the open. It's not even a conspiracy theory. Like just that's what they said, and that's. Yeah what they meant like Mm -hmm. it's not even like that's what they said but they meant something else Mm -hmm. like that's what they meant so silence i thought i did silence (laughs) take care of that problem all right um well we may as well just jump right into it because a lot of these are jensaki um, okay oh yeah 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 yeah. um a lot of there was a man there was just a really interesting press conference. I think, no, I, this is actually, I guess there's two separate press conferences here, but um, the first clip that we're going to play is from one, and then all the rest of her clips are, are from a different press conference. Gotcha. Um, but we're going to just go ahead and, and jump right into it. You ready? I'm ready. All right. In terms of actions, Alex, that uh, we have taken or we're working to take, I should say, from the federal government, uh, we've increased uh, disinformation research and tracking uh, within the Surgeon General's office. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. We're working with doctors and medical professionals to connect uh, to connected medical experts with popular with popular who are popular with their audiences with uh, with accurate information and boost trusted content. So we're helping get trusted content out there. All right. A couple of things about that. Um, 
I think, of course, the most important thing that she said in there was uh, we're flagging problematic posts for Facebook. For Facebook. Yeah. Like those are, and she emphasizes it. For Facebook. Yeah. She gets all kind of tongue tied at the end. She and does. I like, I wonder, I wonder if that says something about how she feels about what she's saying. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Uh, but the, you know, there is clearly, I mean, if you haven't realized this over the last year, then you're just not paying attention. But there is clearly, and now they're saying it outright, uh, a concerted effort to control the information that is presented. Yeah, and, the, and it's it's been pretty clear that that's been the case for a while, but this is them actually coming out and saying it, that they're actually responsible for it. Because mm-hmm. before, they've kind of hid behind, well, you know, it's a private company, they can do what they want to do, you know, blah, Well, I blah, mean, blah. she said something about that later, but we'll, we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it... But that's pretty blatant, that they're that like they're responsible for the messaging that's on social media right now. Yeah, this is, this is the Ministry of Truth. And yeah. to back this up, this is not uh, This is a clip from the Prime Minister of New Zealand, who I can't stand. Yeah. Um, her name is uh, Jacinda Ardern or something, something like that. Yeah. Um, and she is... Uh, yeah, she's a, she's a little authoritarian... Um, <laughs> Just, I don't know. I was trying to. Like, <laughs> I got some words, but they're not appropriate for <laughs> yeah, the podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, maybe we can shift that. Uh, she's like a little uh, authoritarian caterpillar, uh, and I'm I'm worried about you know when she really fully blooms. <laughs> just states. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, let, let's just. <laughs> Let's just play this. And there is a separation between, um, so there's like a, a silent part in the middle. Mm-hmm. It's because this is, while this is from the same interview, mm-hmm. uh, there was, um, she talked a lot in between. Uh, that doesn't mean that the the quote is taken out of context, but yeah. um, I just wanted to make it clear that, because when I originally cut it together, yeah. it sounded like it was just like one statement. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to make it clear that it wasn't just, that Once. there was a there's a break yeah yeah that, that um, there's two separate I, pieces of the, yeah yeah I didn't want to bis- I I didn't want it to seem misleading yeah right so um but but this is from the same interview and it's and it's regarding the same topic so here yeah. we go we will continue to be your single source of truth we will provide information frequently. And, and when you see those messages, remember that unless you hear it from us, um, it is not the truth. You got it right there. Now that's some really Orwellian stuff. I right tell there. you, man, like that's straight out of the book, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, like yeah. we are the ministry of truth. Like we will tell you what is fact and what is fiction. Yeah. Like Can if I, it comes from anyone else, it's a lie. I mean, are you kidding me, man? I yeah. I so I've been very slowly um, reading uh, James Bovard's book about government lies. Yeah. Um and. Like I, I don't know. I'm I, it, it amaz- some of the information that he presents there is just amazing to me. Is it floors me that, um, but essentially the data would suggest that people recognize that the government lies after the lie has been exposed. Yeah. But then they just accept as fact the next thing that the government says without any real skepticism. And you're right about that. And I've never, that's something I've never really understood, but it is true. And it, it, for people that have faith in the system and the government in general, it, that's the part I, I can never get past. It's like, like, you know, they've lied about so much. Like, mm-hmm. why is it different now? Like, yeah. what makes now different? You know, I've, I've never understood it. Yeah. They, they lied to you just yesterday. Why do you yeah. think they're telling the truth yeah. today? Why is today better? Like you know, <laughs> I don't know. There's this, there's a weird faith that people have in government, like that by virtue of by virtue of being in government, somebody becomes virtuous. Yeah, and it's the opposite. Yeah, it seems to me. <laughs> <laughs> like I believe a lot of people, not all, but a lot of people get in with the best intent into government with the best intentions and mean to do well, mm-hmm. and then just get corrupted by the system. Yeah, like I think that's a pretty common thing. Yeah. So I mean, to to think that these people aren't like just full of crap is yeah. like. <laughs> and, and, and you know, I use this quote all the time because I love it. But Captain Malcolm Reynolds. Yeah. Um, government is a body of people, usually notably ungoverned absolutely yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i mean she says at the end of that if you didn't get the information from us the government yeah 
then it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> I so I I actually saw that clip originally on I think it was DW News when I watched it yeah. and like I was floored. Yeah. Like yeah, I I could not believe that I was watching this. Like I I almost thought it was satire. Mm-hmm. Like I mean it it seemed like that would be something that would be on a, a satire thing. Yeah, Babylon B or something yeah, like no that. No joke. Like it I was absolutely floored. Like yeah. I just I don't know. Well, um, so there, there's a little bit of pushback from, uh, so now we're getting into the Peter Doocy clips. No. Um, so Peter Doocy gave Jen Psaki some pushback on this. No. Um, and I'm sorry for the, the, the number of clips today, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to, well, I'm trying to re- present this story and use their words as much as possible. Well, and there's a lot of them saying the quiet part out loud all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, there, it really feels like the, the veils really came off this past week. Mm-hmm. And, and these clips kind of represent that. Yeah. You know. So um, he's talking about the, uh, the 12 people, um, some of whom are doctors and various influencers of, of, uh, that have been putting out a bunch of information about COVID vaccines, yeah. um, primarily COVID vaccines, probably I, like, I don't, that's how I've, that's the context in which I've heard some of their stuff anyway. Yeah. Um, probably about the virus itself as well. But, um, anyway, trying desperately to let people know that, um, or maybe to remind people, actually, I guess in a lot of cases is to let people know that these are experimental. Yeah. That we don't know the long term effects of these. Yeah. That there's a bunch of things that are popping up all over the place that don't <laughs> pop up in this kind of of uh, frequency yeah. usually. And the 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 change, the variable that's changed, is these vaccines. Yeah. Um, and, and we don't know. And I mean, it may be. So, it could be anything. It but, could be coincidence. It could. But yeah. Um, you know, at least people should be aware. Well, and that's what's so frustrating about all of this, what we're talking about today, is because, like, there's there's a concerted effort to not have those voices heard. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, a concerted effort. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just makes you wonder, like, well, why is that? Like, why are they pushing this thing so hard? If it's so good for us, why is the push so hard? Yeah. You know, I mean, why? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, you you have to wonder about the the effort that's being put into um, propagandizing and urging and coercing people into getting a vaccine for a disease that, for most people, has a ninety nine point nine something percent yeah. survival rate. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's it, something, something's afoot here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, I mean, we've had worse, we've had, we've had worse flus, but they were treated better. Yeah. Um, in the past. Yeah. And, um, uh, and we had a clip on this show actually a, a while back, a couple month or so ago, um, where a doctor was talking about, I think it was the 2017 flu season that was, that killed, um, like 200,000 people or 90,000 people. Anyway, a bunch something of, like that, lot, yeah. yeah, lots of. A lot of people, anyway. Yeah. Um, and that may seem like a really small number compared to the 600,000 um, that have died s- reportedly from COVID, yeah. um, or at least died with COVID. Yeah. Um, but she was also pointing out that that was, that was for a flu where we have effective and bro- widely used um, treatments, uh, like early treatments. Yeah, and once and still again, still that many people died. Yeah, exactly, and like there, it like there are good treatments for COVID too. We just there Ignore once them. again, like it's it's a naughty word to even say them. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's just yeah, don't we don't want to get pulled? No, I don't. I don't want this podcast again. to be pulled down, so I'm not gonna say them. But yeah. it is crazy that you can't even like use those like names. Yeah, <laughs> and how does that? And you know, again, so one of the themes that's come up frequently on this show is what science really is and how it's misused by the media and by government as, as representing like a, a collection of facts of unquestionable facts. Um, and uh, that's not what science is. Uh, science is a process, uh, for eliminating alternatives. Yeah. That's really what science is. Science is a process for eliminating alternatives. Yeah. Um, and presumably what you have left is the correct answer, but that's not always but the case. But it's never certain. Yeah. yeah. Um, science doesn't prove anything. 
Yeah. It disproves things. Yeah. That's um, the whole idea is you disprove everything and see what you're left with. Yeah. It progresses by failure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so anytime somebody's telling you that this is unquestionable or even that, look, before Darwin, 97% of scientists agreed that God created everything in seven days. Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a bit of hyperbole, but, um, but obviously before Darwin, people believed in creation. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, at the time of Darwin's death, he was still fighting to try and get <laughs> natural selection, evolution by natural selection to be accepted by the scientific community. Yeah. And now if you question that, <laughs> you know, you're, uh, so point yeah. being that none of this is certain and yeah. science isn't about certainty. It's about, it's about uncertainty and it's about disproving alternatives. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's just horribly misused and, um, and they're trying to do it here. They're trying to silence the alternatives. Yeah. Which is not disprove them. Yeah. Silence just silence them, them which is in, in it's working. Like I, yeah. I, I won't say that, well, silencing them is working, but mm -hmm. they're still not getting to their objective because like I was telling you, I was reading an article just before we started recording, mm -hmm. like only 33% of Alabama is vaccinated, at least yeah. according to the article I read. I well, kind of question I mean, that number. I think it's just over 50% of the U.S. population. Is well, vaccinated. and it, you're right. It is around 50% in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, which is which means they're that's the reason they're fighting so hard for this is because they want people to get this vaccine so bad. Yeah. And... Like, it, but f that tells you that 50% of the country can like smell through the bull. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they, they, they look at this as like, man, they're like forcing this really hard. I probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is the, what is the agenda here? Yeah. And I'm still not sure. I don't know either. Like, I, and I, I asked that, like when I asked you that a minute ago, like I've legitimately like, I, I don't know. And I know you don't either, but mm -hmm. like something's afoot here. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what it is. I think we'll find out at some point. Yeah. I mean, in a lot of, a, a lot of times when I think about this, I think this is just kind of a test run. Yeah. This is, this is a way of getting people used to the idea of, you know, government, you know, pushing these things upon them or yeah. government threatening to take your, your liberty away if you don't do what they say. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that already exists in everyday life. I mean, that's, that's what law is really about is yeah. the government saying, if you don't do what we want you to do, then you're going to lose your liberty. Yeah. Um, but they're getting into some really personal stuff yeah. with this. And, and, um, uh, I mean, I think that a lot of it is to just try and see how compliant you can make people yeah. or how many people are compliant. Yeah. Um, you know, you talk about a vaccine registry. Uh, to me, it's a lot like the gun registry. Like, who is it that we need to worry about? Who? So yeah. the, it's the opposite because whoever's on the gun registry is the people you need to worry about if you're the government. <laughs> yeah. And whoever's not on the vaccine registry are the people that you need to worry about if you're the government. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's all about making these lists. Oh, absolutely. You know, Um and so I don't know. I, I think it's it's part of it is to maintain that state of fear because people are more willing to give up freedom and give power over to the government when they are afraid. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's there's a lot going on, but I think there's something more focused than all of that. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Well, and even if we met full like whatever their goals are for the vaccinated public, mm -hmm. it would just be something else after that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it they've already it said, well, we wanted there. eighty percent uh, vaccination so that we would have herd immunity, but with this new Delta variant, it needs to be even higher than that. I've heard that. Yeah. Which is crazy talk, by the way, because like to reach herd immunity, you don't necessarily need everybody vaccinated. No. Um, I mean, people who have not had it. Not even close, actually. Not even close, yeah. And to have people, I mean, because you'll, you'll have people that's had it and are now immune. Mm -hmm. Like once you have the, you need a, a percentage of people that have the antibodies, not necessarily vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I mean, I got my hair cut today and, um, and she was telling me that she was, uh, I don't remember, some clinic for something. I can't, I can't remember exactly what, or. I shouldn't say it on air or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, and they forced her to wear a mask the whole time. Yeah. And part of it was her doing some exercises and so forth. And and she is like, look, if you want me to wear the mask while I'm doing this stuff, I'm just going to pass out here. Like, there's yeah. no way that I can do this with the mask on. Yeah. Um, and they told her that, they, that she could pull it down below her nose, but she needed to keep it over her mouth. <laughs> and she's had COVID. 
Yeah. Like, what, what's, what is the point? This is all theater. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, and a medical facility should know better. At least in my med, like, I walk into my medical facility, and I don't wear a mask. And yeah. I may get some funny looks, and they ask that we wear masks, but I don't. And yeah. nobody stops me. Yeah. Yeah, we're past that. <laughs> I've been so. stopped a few times, but not recently, mm-hmm. you know. So. Yeah. Um, well, let's uh, let's go ahead on to the next one. This is um, this is Saki uh, talking about or trying to respond to um, Ducey uh, pressing her about these people that they are watching their Facebook profiles for mm-hmm. misinformation. These huh. specific people. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Well, Peter, first of all, as you know, we're in, we're in a regular touch with with a range of media outlets as as, as let me finish watch, as we are as we are in regular touch with social media platforms. This is publicly uh, open information, people sharing information online, just as you are all reporting information on your news stations. But- okay, it seems to me that the main point in that is her talking about Facebook as a platform. We're yeah. in touch with media outlets as well as social media platforms, et cetera. These are not the same thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> They're not the same thing. Yeah. Um, they are when you consider that what they want to do with them. Yeah. Like they want to control these platforms the same way they control the media. Yeah. Well, and but if you look at it through that perspective, mm-hmm. then that's 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 her rationale. Yeah. Well, they they do have one thing that's certainly in common, yeah. and that is that they are both supposed to be protected by the First Amendment. Exactly. And as far as the the platform end of it, like we should be able to say what we want on these platforms. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, and that's the you know the legislation around it kind of centers on that. Um, if they are a media outlet, um, then they are, uh, they are liable for the information that's on their, on, on their site. Yeah. Um, if they are a platform, then they're not. Yeah. Uh, now Facebook has always maintained Twitter. All these places have always maintained that they are, they are only a platform. They do not curate. They do not edit. They do not do any Which of that if stuff. That was true. That would be fine. Mm-hmm. And and there was a time where that was true. Yes. Like I mean, before 2016 and kind of through 2016. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was the truth. Like you could say whatever you want. You weren't didn't really have much of a risk of being taken down. Yeah. But that has drastically changed. Definitely. Um, so let's uh, let's play the second part of that. I will tell you that these are people who are sharing information on public platforms on Facebook, information that is traveling, is inaccurate. Our biggest concern here, and I frankly think it should be your biggest concern, is the number of people who are dying around the country because they're getting misinformation that is leading them to not take a vaccine. Young people, old people, kids, children, this is all being, a lot of them are being impacted by misinformation. All right, and the lesson in that clip is be careful what you put on your Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, that the the government is 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 watching people's Facebook profiles. They are looking at specific people's Facebook profiles, looking for specific kinds of information that they feel yeah. shouldn't be uh, disseminated, which is absolutely like a hundred percent against the um, the tenet in the First Amendment about freedom of the press. Yeah, like regardless of so. Uh, and I, I know we've talked about this before, but just to clarify to everybody, um, the the First Amendment enshrines like five protections. Um, two of them, well, they're actually they're all related to each other. Um, but an important uh, thing that has become a distinction that isn't really a distinction is the freedom of speech and freedom of the press. And so people have started to look at the press as a particular class of people, yeah. um, somebody with a particular job title. But when the the Bill of Rights was written, um, the press meant like literally the printing press. Yeah. Um, it wasn't it wasn't the media press. It was the printing press. And it, what they were saying is that the government hasn't uh, has no right to limit people's speech. You can't stop people from expressing ideas yeah. and you can't stop pe- those ideas from being disseminated by any willing participants. Disseminator. And yeah. now like you're your own printing press. Yeah. Like as far as like, I got a printer sitting in my house. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can, I am, I can use that to, to make newspapers and send them out and put them, disseminate them however I feel fit. Yeah. And the internet's no different. Right. 
or should be no different. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a time where it wasn't. Like, I mean, that's just the way it was. I can yeah. guarantee you, like, I'm on some of them lists. If they're following Facebook posts and yeah. stuff like that, man, some of the stuff <laughs> I'd be putting out there, I'm just saying, man. Yeah, I, I literally <laughs> log in to put the podcast up, but I don't know well, that that saves me from being on some I list. was going to say, that's probably enough in our case, <laughs> but like I'm doubly on the list because they're, they're, I'm surprised I don't have helicopters flying around. <laughs> I kind of hope so because I, I did my one of my stated goals when we started this thing was to get on the um, Southern Poverty Law Center's list of anti-government extremists. Yeah. Wow. So I'm still, we're, we're, I have, I haven't, it hasn't been reported to me that we're there yet, but uh, I'm still hoping fingers yeah. crossed. All right. One yeah. day. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, exactly. Like the, the dissemination of information is not, it, it is, should not be regulated. The, yeah. It can't be. Yeah. Uh, according to the constitution. I mean, yeah. the, the Obviously law, we don't use that document anymore. But. Right. I mean, but the law of the land is that the government cannot restrict dissemination of information, any information, whether yeah. they agree with it or not, whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's not the point. Yeah. Absolutely. And if it's not true, the people who would be, I mean, that's what li- where libel comes in, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, if you say something about somebody that's not true, you can be held responsible for that. Yeah. But not so much by the government, right? That's more of a civil thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that was my understanding, but I wasn't sure if maybe I mm-hmm. missed something in there. Yeah. And that's supposed to be the difference between a platform and a media outlet. Yeah. Um, is that a media outlet is absolutely, they are expected to uh, follow up do good research, uh, ensure that the information that they're presenting is correct, yeah. um, factually correct before they do. Yeah. And so if they defame somebody in the course of that because they didn't do enough research or they misrepresented them in some way, then they're liable. Yeah. But the f- Facebook isn't liable for you saying something defamatory about somebody else. Yeah. That, that's I the idea. Yeah. yeah. The, the person who said it would be. Um, but they're trying and to that have seems, it both ways And that now. seems fair. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I, I absolutely, I think that's kind of a self-regulating thing, mm-hmm. you know. We don't need the government to step in to, to do that for us. No. You know. No, I agree. Um, this one is... Uh, is only partially related. So this is Jim Bovard on the Scott Horton show. He's um, talking about uh, the January 6th stuff and some of the aftermath of that. And I, I think that what he says here um, is important to keep in mind as we go through the rest of this. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and play that clip. The thing that fascinates me is how in, how in one day, less than one day, the January 6th ruckus became the equivalent of Pearl Harbor and 9-11 and maybe the War of 1812, too. Yes, and, and, uh, and thereby, anybody who had any vague connection to it uh, was, um, you know, guilty of, um, you know, of insurrection and uh, or guilty of sedition. And this is this is the type of crime that anybody who's anti-war or libertarian or, you know, pro-freedom should be very alarmed by because it's vague, it's expansive, and it's uh, basically a full employment program for prosecutors who can, um, you know, throw these terms out there that aren't aren't clearly defined. And you've got vast numbers of folks who are facing, uh, who who could face heavy prison sentences, not not for what they actually did, but you know, uh, uh, because of their association with ideas that the uh, Biden administration is publicly condemning. So that was probably more of him talking than we needed to, because obviously like for this discussion, the end of that was the important point, Yeah. but I get a kick out of the guy and I wanted to make sure that it was, it was in context what he was saying. Um, But the idea that you can be, you can be held criminally liable essentially for disagreeing with what the government is pushing. Yeah. Um, yeah. is a ve- very, very dangerous precedent that's oh, yeah. being set through this COVID information control. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're this is a dangerous, dangerous path. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think that, you know, what he's saying there about, um, it, for those of you that disagree with us, just remember how this works when Trump gets reelected. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> or whoever comes next. Yeah, I mean, because, that's mostly because a joke. I, not I, coming back. But. No, but I actually, <laughs> just to throw it out there, I think whoever comes, at, who comes after Biden is going to be worse. 
Yeah. Whether it's a Democrat or a Republican. You're probably right. Um, I think, I, th- I truly believe who, even if it's another, if it's a Republican next, that they're going to be worse than Trump. Like I, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but. People are, well, I mean, like, I think that people are fed up, but it's very clear that a lot of people aren't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, people are fed up, but they're fed up. So they've moved further and further into their own corner. Yeah. Which is the reason both sides are getting so much worse is because mm-hmm. they're clinging harder and harder. And I'm hoping that at some point they're going to realize what me and you realize is that both sides are the problem mm-hmm. and start looking for answers elsewhere. Yeah. Because look for an, a completely different alternative. Yeah. And if um, we have, and if there's a good messenger out there of it, I think there's a real opportunity. Somebody like Dave Smith. Or... Uh, I, you know, that's <laughs> that name has been floated around, and I like it a lot. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. Um, no, I, uh, you're you're absolutely right. Um, I the the problem is that the fear works in that it, in that arena moves, as well. Yeah. Um, so people are afraid. Like you end up with the choice between a Trump and a Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And people don't want to vote for a third party, even though there's because they're so even scared they, of the alternative. They hate yeah. both of the candidates <laughs> exactly, but they don't want the one that they hate the least to lose because they voted for somebody that they believed in. Exactly. I mean, um, they and that is that is the problem that libertarians have. Yeah, you know, the, or, the and the two. Green Party and the Constitutional Party and all the others. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know what? I, I think I've said before here that one of my philosophies in voting um, is to always vote for a third party and never vote for an incumbent. Yeah, that's a good policy. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't worked out for me so well, far, no, but. obviously. <laughs> but but you know, if more people did that. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, bearing that in mind, and also, uh, I actually wanted to point out, and it 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 becomes more apparent in this next clip, but in the previous clip from Jen Psaki, um, she also like very pointedly moves the conversation away from what the government is doing and onto, uh, this guilt thing about, well, you obviously don't care about the people that are dying. Yeah. Um, and she does that again here. And this is a, I think this is an important clip to, to listen to as well. So we're going to go ahead and throw that one in as well. All right. Concern, though, I think for a lot of people on Facebook is that now this is Big Brother watching you. They're more concerned about that than people dying across the country because of a a pandemic where misinformation is traveling on social media platforms. Yes. Yes, I am. (laughs) As a matter of fact, I am. (laughs) I can't speak for everybody, but I can say certainly for myself. Yeah, I'm more concerned about the government spying on everybody. Yeah. And taking away and threatening to take away people's freedom. I'm far more concerned about government coercion than a virus. Yeah. Well, I mean, freedom's dangerous. Like, I mean, that's mm-hmm. the that's the thing. You get to make your everybody gets to make their own decisions. You know, and that's not really where we're at right now. At least on social media. Yeah. You know, you don't get to make your own decisions about what you say. You say the wrong thing, it gets taken down. You get banned. Yeah. Things like that. Um, I mean, it's important and it's important to have all of this information out there, mm-hmm. um, whether I mean, yeah, you're going to have a lot of dumb stuff out there, but mm-hmm. it's up to the people to figure out what's what's what. Yeah, you know? I don't see anybody fighting to have the um, the flat earth stuff taken down or <laughs> anything like that. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I It's. Once again, she moves the conversation away from what the government's doing and into this guilt thing about, well, people are well, dying. Well, you don't care about people dying, yeah. you know. And it's not that I don't care about people dying, because I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't want to see in, anybody die. But at the same time, like, freedom is paramount. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it, it just is. Like, yeah. yeah. More, the most people get what they want when there's freedom. Yeah. Have you seen... Um, I robot. I have. Okay. I, I imagine the movie is a lot more familiar to people. The the story, or actually, it's a set of stories. The book is a, is six or seven short stories or, oh, okay. or novellas. Yeah. Um, and the movie is mostly based on one, although it does incorporate some of the ideas from others. But anyway, uh, and the movie actually like completely flips it at the end. Like, you, if you've seen the movie, you got to read the book because. 
Is it better? Oh yeah, it's definitely better. Well, it always um, is. But I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. rhetorical question. Um, but it's, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into an analysis of how they screwed up the whole thing in the movie. But yeah. um, I mean, one of the things that that is this, you know, is the I guess the crux of that film. Spoilers, sorry, yeah. um, is that the idea that this this robot, this this intelligence, yeah. is tasked with keeping people safe. Yeah. And it finds that the most effective way of keeping people safe is keeping them locked up. Yeah. Well, and that's and the robots, right? Like, I mean, that is the and that's that's what this whole past year has been about. Mm -hmm. Like the the difference between do you want to live your life hiding or do you want to live your life? Yeah. You know, that's that's the choice we all have mm -hmm. to make. And I mean, if you choose to to live in hiding, that's you. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like that's your decision. Yeah. But don't try to force that decision on everybody else. Yeah. I haven't asked anything of you. Yeah. You're the ones that are making the the demands. Exactly. Um. And uh. Yeah. I I agree. And uh, you know, some people become so afraid of dying that they stop living. Yeah. And I think that that's a real shame. Yeah. Oh. But that's them. Yeah. Like that's their choice. Absolutely. And and there's a lot of there's a lot of shaming right now. Mm -hmm. And cuz there's a lot of people that that have made that decision and they feel like they have to shame everybody else into making the same one, mm -hmm. you know. Um and it's just it's not it's not the reality, you know. Yeah. Um so and I I I should have explained there probably. Um the when he's so that was in response to uh Peter Ducey pushing back um and uh or actually i guess yeah um that uh you know pushing back and talking about the misinformation that's been given by Fauci uh as an example um which time yeah <laughs> I know. um and you know, she says, she replies that, well, you know, he's been clear. It's, uh, science evolves, information evolves. Um, but the, the is, <laughs> he almost goes the other direction though. Like, like, yeah, I get it. Science evolves, but like, like he almost moves backwards with science, like stuff. Oh, that, <laughs> Fauci. Well, yeah. I, talking about Fauci. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't want to get into that particularly, yeah. but, um, he, the the difference is well oh, okay so let's play this this very last clip and then we'll talk about that okay um you know and and this this does kind of this does kind of circle us back uh, so we're so, so, we're, so we're, we're, we're following we're, the theme then yeah, we're, we're we're circling back to the to the first thing that we played <laughs> Jensaki say all right. Uh, about the science evolving, Facebook used to post, uh, used to block people from posting that COVID may have originated for a lab. That is something this president now admits is a possibility. So is there any concern that things you are trying to block or have taken down might someday turn out to be? We don't take anything down. We don't block anything. Facebook and any private sector company makes decisions about what information should be on their platform. Okay, and so that's that's her response on that, right? Um, but here's the thing. Government at th this point is in a position to bury Facebook if they oh, chose to. Absolutely. All right. So, sure, they're not... Um, also notice that she doesn't address really the question about, <laughs> uh, you know, the what about the things? And it's a perfectly reasonable question. Like, okay, oh. so you have been blocking information saying that it was, it was, um, misinformation that, that the current administration is now accepting as a possible, uh, yeah. as a possibility. Yeah. Uh, aren't you concerned that maybe some of the information that you're blocking now will turn out to be true? Yeah. She doesn't answer that question. Yeah. Um, her response is, well, these are private companies and we don't block anything. We don't take anything down. We just, I mean, she didn't say this here, but yeah. we just suggest to them, we flag posts that we think that they should take down. Yeah. Now, if you were in a dominant position like Facebook, there's only one, there's only one entity that can put an end to your business. Yep. And that's the government that is now flagging posts for you and suggesting yeah. that you take them down. Exactly. Do you defy them? <laughs> Not if you want to keep your business. Are you in a position to defy them? I mean, this is the question. This is an important part of this. So, yeah. um, and and it, you know, it does answer 
I, I think really clearly to the libertarians who push the idea of, well, it's a private company, they can do what they want. Yeah, I've had I mean, an issue with that from the beginning, but like this kind of... I mean, of, there's truth in it too. Like, Well, there I, is. We don't want to dismiss the idea entirely no. uh, because we, but, we tout that when we talk about things like discrimination and so forth. But this is different though because this has had the government's fingerprints on it the whole time. Yes. Um, it's just more blatant now, Yeah. which, which should put it into that argument mm -hmm. in this category permanently. Yeah. Um, and it does go back, as you said earlier, uh, to 2016. This is yeah. when all this started. And why yeah. did it start? It started because the government was putting a lot of pressure on these social media companies um, because of the quote unquote misinformation that led that led quote unquote supposedly to yeah, Trump's yeah. Um, <laughs> led to uh, Trump's election. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and the problem for all of these companies is that they are in a position where they really kind of have to comply. Oh, yeah. Or they could lose the whole thing. Exactly. So. Um, and then, uh, so there's, I mean, that I, I think that that presents the story that we're trying to, to yeah. present. And I just want to give um, one example for people to, to remember when, like going back to Bovard's thing about being concerned about um, the... Uh, the government using kind of these vague terms are just essentially uh, being able to um, criminally prosecute people that disagree with them um, and uh, and go after political uh, opponents or I mean and I, when I say political opponents I don't necessarily mean like the next guy that's running for office yeah. I mean I mean people like us yeah. that are out here with dissenting voices yeah um, and uh, so I just want to just want to talk about somebody that we've talked about a lot here, and that's Julian Assange. Yeah. And I just want to just recap this story about Julian Assange for everybody. Just like keep this in mind when you're when you're thinking about these things. Um, is that he is still imprisoned in the UK? Um, he is. Uh, they're trying to extradite him. The U.S. is trying to have him extradited uh, to face um, a trial for releasing information that was, I would say, very clearly in the public interest about war crimes being committed by our government. Oh, yeah. Along with other things. like, But that's yeah. the big one, I would say. Yeah. Um, war crimes being committed by our government um, in our name yeah. and with our money. Yeah. I, I think that's very clearly in the public interest. Absolutely. Um, especially since a, a super majority in this country is opposed to the wars that we're involved in here yeah. that were, you know, related to this. But, um, but so that's essentially what his crime is, is releasing, releasing true information yep. that was being kept secret from the public, um, about how, uh, our government was committing criminal acts. Yep. All right. So what they're claiming is that um, that he instructed people to do illegal things. This is how this is how they're trying to get around that he is a publisher, not, aspect. Yeah, yeah, not a person. Um, oh, and just to point out, like how much of a publisher he is, yeah. uh, there have been thousands of articles written using the information that he published as a primary source. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, there you go. Thousands of articles. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they're they're trying to get around the idea that he's a publisher by claiming that he instructed people to do illegal things. Yeah. Well, even if that were true, and it's questionable whether that's true, yeah. um, certainly by no means proven. He probably was because that's what yeah. journalists do, right? I mean, yeah. you know, somebody presents you with a with secret information. Isn't your next question? Can you get me anything more? Yeah. Well, yeah. What else can you get? <laughs> you right. Know? Um, but regardless, uh, the the people that he asked allegedly to do illegal things, they still have free choice. Yeah. Like the choices yeah. they make are their problem, right? Yeah. Like he shouldn't be liable for their choices, even if he suggested it to them. Absolutely. And um, if he's liable for the free choices that people made after he suggested it to them, what about the FBI? Yeah. <laughs> who regularly is talking people into criminal acts. That's very true. In order to arrest them and show their usefulness. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you don't believe that, just you know, yeah. just six, start looking around. It's not, yeah. <laughs> it's not six, hard to find. Six week cycle. Six week cycle. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so he was being held. First off, he was hiding in the in um, the Ecuadorian yep. embassy yep. Uh, in the UK. Um, really about some charges in Sweden, I think it was um, some um, like sexual assault or some kind of charges in Sweden. Um, they invaded the uh, the embassy yeah. to pull him out of there which I'm pretty sure is an act of war, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, although the story is the Ecuadorians in, allowed them in at this point. But so, but yeah. regardless, um, he's being held for charges that, uh, that originated in Sweden that have now been dropped. Yeah. All right. Um, and yet he continued to be held in the UK after those charges were dropped uh, in order to have an extradition hearing to the U S hmm. all right. So then they had the extradition hearing and the extradition was denied yeah. because our prison system is so brutal. <laughs> they literally have him in a dungeon in the UK, but our prison system is so brutal that they still wouldn't you send still him. Still wouldn't release him, yeah. All right. Um, so the extradition was denied, but he's still being held. <laughs> Even though the original charges that he was being held for have been dropped yeah. and the extradition that he was being held for has been denied and he's continued to be held in order to allow for the U S to appeal. Now in the meantime, huh. and the U S has clearly stated that they plan to appeal. Yeah. Actually they've started an appeal process. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, the primary witness against him recanted his testimony. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now the, the main um, evidence that they had that he did these things that they're trying to extradite him for yeah. has been, is false. It, it doesn't exist anymore. It's as if it didn't exist. The witness recanted the testimony. Yeah. So that testimony is no longer valid, but he's still being held huh. in the UK and the U S is still appealing the decision to extradite. Yeah. I, I mean, they don't want to let him go. So yeah. <laughs> like that's the other option. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's exactly it. Yeah. So this is this is what the government can do to somebody who has done something that they're not happy about. Yep. I mean, this guy is essentially being held with no charges yep. um, after his extradition has already been denied, uh, um, and he's being held in solitary confinement. I wonder how much the leaders of Facebook and some of these other companies look at that and wonder, could that be them at some point? Yeah. Like if like I mean if Mark yeah, Zuckerberg I mean, really like took a hard stance and mm -hmm. said no to the government, especially at this point, like what would they do to him? Yeah. I mean seriously. Would he like, be sitting in Russia like Snowden or yeah. in prison in the UK? Could like, very easily yeah. be. I mean, with yeah. with the way way things are playing out, like I mean, he's kinda hung. Mm -hmm. And this is something we pointed out just recently is look how aggressively the government um pursues prosecution of crimes against the government. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And how weakly they pursue prosecution of other crimes, of, yeah. of pr crimes against private, private citizens. Exactly. Unless those people have significant government influence. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, just, I don't know, be careful. I So there's a good Winston Churchill quote that seems appropriate here. Um, let, me, let me pull it over here where I can read it. All right. Uh, he said, if you will not fight for right when you can easily win without bloodshed, if you will not fight when your victory is sure and not too costly, you may come to the moment when you will have to fight with all the odds against you and only a precarious chance of survival. You may have to fight when there is no hope of victory because it's better to perish than to live as slaves. Yeah. Well, we might be in one of those we're, moments. We're, <laughs> we're heading down that rabbit hole one way or the other. Yeah. Um, so, so these things are not unimportant. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't affect you yet. Yeah. But it might not but, be long. But by the time it does, it's too late. And yeah. First they came for the, you've heard it. Yeah. Um, so I just have, I just have one more, uh, little clip to play. This is kind of unrelated. Um, I just find it funny. I yeah. mean, it's like darkly comical, but, um, so there, this is from a report about the Iran kidnapping plot. I don't know if you'd heard anything about this. Uh, really. The report essentially is that there is a, um, what they refer to in the report as a journalist uh, from Iran um, in New York that they were going to kidnap and, and take back to Iran. Hmm. Um, 
Now, this is, again, one of those uh, careful uses of the word journalist. I mean, this is like yeah. a, a social media personality. Yeah. Um, you know, she's a journalist in as much as you and I are journalists. Yeah. And I consider us journalists, so I'm not opposed I, to that, I do too. that label. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I don't think that these people will consider us journalists. Yeah. <laughs> and so the fact that they're using the label here, it's, it's a matter of convenience, I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, h- here's the clip. Masi Alinejad. Uh, she has a huge following on social media, and she has used that uh, to publicize the Iranian government's human rights abuses, uh, its treatment of women, including notably uh, the fact that the government in Iran mandates that women wear a headscarf in public. I love the w- that he used the word notably there. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, just try. Like, I know this is difficult. Yeah. Can you imagine a government that would mandate that its people wear something specific like a face Over covering their face <laughs> yes <laughs> i know it's unreal right well it is that funny. is a clear human rights abuse i don't disagree with that point i don't disagree with that either i'm telling you though um two three years ago like that was like the big talking point like mm-hmm. as far as like uh, just Ar- iran treats its people so horribly and this that and the other and that was a, one of the big excuses they used was the hijab like yeah. that was a big deal mm-hmm. um you don't hear that as often anymore. Yeah. When you pulled that clip the other day, I was like, hmm, that's one that's kind of went away yeah. conveniently. I think well, this guy didn't get the memo. Well, I mean, he's clearly oblivious. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, maybe he doesn't live in the same place that I live. And, I, you know, we're in kind of a weaker version of it down here in the, in the, in south. the south. But, um, I mean, he sounds American. Yeah, yeah uh, right. <laughs> like, has he Has he not been here for the last year? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I don't know. I was blown away. I thought it was hysterical, though. Yeah. No. And uh, so I had to include that one for you guys. We'll end on a... I don't yeah. know if that's a high note, <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's at least funny, right? Like, you got to yeah. admit that that's funny. Absolutely. Um, so uh, this is... We're like, what's... Um, I see how long we've actually talked. Once the clips are inserted, um, we might have run a little long tonight. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but yeah, I think this was important. I, I like. I hope that. I hope that we are able to arrange this in such a way that it tells the story the way we meant it to be told. I've had a lot of listeners tell me that they think the podcast is too short. So. Oh yeah, I have. <laughs> I've had listeners tell me that it's too long too. I've, so. had, <laughs> I, I've had people tell me it's too too short, and I've had and the same people are like, "But Rogan is too long." You're like, "Y'all need to be a little longer." <laughs> Somewhere he between an be hour a... and four hours. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> at, at least that's a at least it's a range. Yeah. Um, now yeah. I, I I've heard a lot of people say that we need to shoot for more like twenty minutes because that's our that's a typical. Um, yeah. Uh, Drive back. Drive. And forth. Yeah. Um, oh, you just gotta commute. pick up. That's what the, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Commute. I can I can sympathize with that, but you just gotta pick up where you left off, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's I mean, what one I of my do. favorite podcasts, hands down, is the No Agenda Show. And yeah. It's it's three hours twice a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's a lot to take intake. Uh, yeah, but but it's good though. I can't listen to it all at once, but that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, we plan to be back in a week. Um. We'll uh. Hopefully you will. Those of you who haven't already, of course. Yeah. Um, and those of you who have already will continue to. Uh, like us on Facebook. Um, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. It just occurred to me, I don't know that I put the last podcast up on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to put two up tonight. Oh, no. Oh, well. <laughs> Oops. Um, it really you should be s- a you, habit by now. You set everything up to do it, but you always have to do it after I leave. Yeah, I think maybe you, I did do it. I, think I don't you remember. Put things in motion to do it. I will. I will check to be sure. May not have though. Now that I think about it, yeah. I don't actually know. <laughs> um, I I will strive to do better. <laughs> I'll strive to remind the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the like two of you that listen on YouTube. Um, mm. but yeah, uh, like and subscribe. Um, uh, share, comment. Yeah. You can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. Uh, that's M I C H A E L. Apparently that's a really difficult name. I <laughs> I know. Um and yeah, Michael at the Liberty Mike, if you have any comments that you you know, if you want to send me a private message. Um and we are available obviously on Facebook. Uh, yeah. Gary has to tell me if somebody sends a message <laughs> cuz I don't there. I don't check, but yeah. um but he will. 
<laughs> Generally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Um, and if you feel like uh, leaving a, a nice review, that's always great, too. Absolutely. And so we will, uh, you'll hear from us again in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later.